sitting next to me on the left side uh, he he uh, he represents the storage industry he is a uh, he is a manufacturer of uh, storage batteries and uh, computers uh, anyway uh, the grid uh, schemes which is which are envisaged also includes uh, uh, off grid systems with storages so how does it uh, uh, complement the government's vision of uh, taking this uh, targets to 30000 megawatt how does it help good evening team uh, myself rajkiran and i am representing turn on energy private limited and uh, our company directly manages customer needs and we present in all of them at once so we are manufacturers of energy storage devices where in advanced tech we are not using legacy batteries or lithium ion and all we are going futuristic with help of lithium ferrophosphate where we could able to provide 10 years of warranty in the product because off grid system required very efficient storage systems we strongly believe that lithium ferrophosphate is the only solution to store the energies coming forward with that we can help residentials industrials and also commercials backups and to store the solar energy from 1 kilowatt to 200 kilowatt efficiently and uh, we have few series pattern where uh, pwm is the mppt is the where we are suggesting pwm for residential and also mppt for commercial all our products are come under bajaj where it comes with lifestyle uh, ema options and uh, coming forward uh, our product the backup time can be increased based on the client's requirement and about the about the technical knowledge i am not into purely technical so i am not the right person to speak about but for the commercial aspect we have developed pan india we are right now in uh, including rajasthan and also punjab and we are exporting to three countries as of now so you have any other things You have touched upon the crucial uh, point. Uh, uh, one of the key objective, as I mentioned, in the operational uh, maintenance of a system is uh, monitoring key uh, performance indicators of the system. Uh, Manoj sir, what what according to you can you put three KPIs? Can you just identify three important KPIs uh, to be followed in a uh, solar power plant? Exactly the the three key performance indicators. one is the power quality and uh, second one is definitely the performance ratio and third one obviously the deterioration of the uh, i mean the uh, if you talk about the solar module uh, the deterioration also uh, consider as the one of the key performance indicators the uh, when we talk about the power quality uh, obviously there are a lot of challenges we faced in the initial stages uh, because uh, the filter boards were the uh, major culprits in the initial stages the grid connected inverters were having uh, issues with the uh, power qualities uh, dc injection was on the higher level now after uh, many uh, years of struggling uh, even where the even i i would say the epc players were the uh, key people who uh, highlighted this issue with the manufacturers and uh, uh, somehow many of the manufacturers could able to tackle the um, power quality issues and now almost everywhere the stability have uh, come in and the second option uh, second definitely the performance ratio uh, obviously there the performance is based on the solar uh, modules uh, even the solar modules the first one year of deterioration is also a major concern some of the, even in my experience i have seen the first year itself after the installation the first year itself some of the modules have been deteriorated uh, uh, beyond the expected level or beyond the um, the statutory level i have experienced the modules within 6 to 7 years completely gone out of performance and the manufacturers again i am coming back to the manufacturers uh, uh, trouble of i mean the manufacturers creating trouble uh, giving uh, support to the uh, uh, module side earlier we were talking about the inverter side and now coming back to the module side 
if you give me one minute time i will just share my experience from a uh, prominent manufacturer i have uh, had more than one and half megawatt of installations from one of the uh, main manufacturer uh, out of bombay and uh, uh, after 7 years the module of uh, degraded uh, or uh, majority of the module started giving earth leakage when the uh, uh, rains uh, season rainy season comes in the modules are started showing the earth leakage and the inverter get trip the module manufacturer have come in we uh, after repeated request the module manufacturer send their technician and they found out that the module is faulty and now it's not on one single site i have sites from kasaragod to uh, trivandrum there are around, around 7 to 8 sites for having the similar problem and uh, i had almost 6 months repeated fight with the manufacturer and manufacturer put a condition saying that we will not be able to uh, uh, give any service at the site you have to uh, send the module back to our factory we either will service the uh, module and send it back to you or maybe replace it after 7 months of fight even legal and all i had to surrender because i had to face uh, being an epc player front end to the customer i have to support my customer from my pocket i spend my money and i sent one truck load of module which been uh, you know uh, removed from eight different sites one two sites from kasaragod one from two from halapi one from trivandrum and two sites from thrissur from my headquarters so these were i had to send it and yesterday the module have reached their factory i don't know what they are going to uh, service the module whether they are going to send it back again we are facing these kind of challenges uh, i think uh, the those who are in the industry for quite long time all going to face these challenges we as epc players will definitely have to make sure that the terms and conditions of service I mean, as Sriram sir rightly pointed out that we have to give service for 25 years. Solar modules is warranted for 25 years, performance warranty and manufacturing warranty for 10 years and 15 years. How long these companies will support us? That is a big challenge. We as EPC players are get sandwiched in between the customer and the OEMs. Definitely, we need to look into that also. So where the industry unity is really needed. I I have pointed out this issue with the. the concerned authority in uh, mnri also mnri said you right uh, the reasons and we will support and i don't think so they will be able to give any support further so this is again a uh, major issue uh, regarding the uh, module side i don't think so any, i mean i really don't know people are uh, in the back back side i mean the the exhibitors or the manufacturers or the distributors will be able to uh, give this kind of uh, i mean uh, really they will be able to support the industry thank you thank you manoj ji that uh, is a really a painful uh, story we have a painful story from manoj sadish sir sir i have a small question to you india india has uh, around 7500 megawatt of uh, rooftop systems uh, more than half of it is being operated under the scope model uh, i'm sure you are aware of that the fact Uh, the uh, or capex model is not even half of it but unfortunately in kerala we don't have presco model so it's not popular in our part of the country uh, what exactly could be the reason uh, because uh, i feel personally one of the uh, challenges even for a five year warranty you are failing to uh, meet your obligation so how you will run the plan for 25 years or whatever be the term of the ppa 20 years is a real challenge so is that the one only one issue or is there any other issue for the non growth of resco model in kerala actually here all the uh, solar developers they they are in one dilemma because uh, we actually the uh, epc contractors we are not able to educate the people what is resco model and uh, uh, all the other installations so we uh, so somebody want to invest the uh, 
solar segment they want to give a correct picture with the uh, that the margin what they are earning in the life down so they they want to invest the their own uh, financial cap- capacity there is the main reason in kerala i think so I like to add one or uh, two points on to it. See, when, the, when we talk about the RESCO model or OPEX model projects, uh, it's, it's a really a financial engineering. Uh, really, the RESCO or OPEX model business is a financial engineering. Uh, Kerala, we have seen a lot of industries. Uh, uh, we don't really, we don't have investors. And the financial institutions support uh, to the RESCO model project. Uh, when we compare the north indian market there are uh, all the banks like sba or punjab national bank or any any banks the banks are more liberal and they are ready to, uh, ready to support the uh, project i have an experience when i approach punjab national bank with the central pwd's uh, one rasco model project work order in my hand which was uh, at that time under secchi scheme when i approach punjab national bank when the punjab national bank was support, uh, fund was supported by asian development bank the bank official was reluctant to talk to me even because they said this project is not viable but for the similar uh, projects the same punjab national bank in maharashtra and in Punjab uh, and in uh, northern uh, states they were giving supporting the funds so the financial uh, difficulties is the major challenge because in the banking sector also in com uh, i mean incompetent authorities are sitting here and that is one point and second point definitely what i feel is the uh, the confusion in the regulatory perspective when uh, whether the new regulations comes in with a uh, uh, i mean retrospective effect or perspective effect if uh, rasco model project is installed and tomorrow the gross metering is up, uh, coming in definitely the rasco company will get into trouble that is what another issue because the confusion whether the stability on the policy is uh, confusing that is what you mean the threat of uh, gross metering is affecting the rasco model growth uh, that's another valid point uh, thank you for the point you want oh, to add thank you i would like to add uh, one more point regarding uh, rasco model because we were the channel partner for hero future only senator before for doing rasco press in south india but the majority issues we have faced that uh, when we are going to install one megawatt project for rasco operations we don't have enough rooftop space for installing the system for example if we are going to lulu mall or lakshmi hospital this both scenario we, they require at least 3 megawatt of solar installation but the roof area is not not feasible but when you are going to tamil nadu or karnataka there are large go down they are having ample area to do the installation so that also affect the installation when it comes to rasco model in kerala thank you but i think uh, rasco will not see uh, kicking off uh, in the near future in our state <laughs> thank you i would uh, go back to my friend uh, on the service part of uh, an important component that is the battery component the services of inverters i think for the past uh, 10 years or so we are talking to the Uh, inverter manufacturers for having exclusive service centers or exclusive uh, stocking of uh, spares etc but what there are many reasons for that frequent technology updations also uh, causes uh, disruptions in the supply chain and therefore uh, shortage of uh, sub components and components or shortage of engineers but all put together uh, the system energy output uh, is not in it does not commensurate the actual installation capacity which has been discussed when we say 700 megawatt is installed we don't get corresponding energy if you look at the reasons it is primarily the lack of uh, the op- maintenance and service supports how do you propose your uh, battery man- management uh, management systems uh, and battery services backup services are better uh, in that aspect coming forward with uh, lithium ferro prospect we have developed uh, from 1 kilowatt to 200 kilowatt only as of now and uh, for the battery uh, protection we have uh, kept a few system 40 amps car fuse is enough to protect the unit if there is a overload or any load related uh, issues if the battery uh, misbehaves 
the protection systems activates and automatic fuse systems are there to protect and coming to comparing to lead acid battery and uh, lithium peroxide batteries lead acid once it's gone it's gone like uh, it may uh, need more, uh, it may not be that efficient but lithium peroxide there is individual cells which we can uh, which we can open it and pack it and we can test individually and we can treat those cells and uh, fix it back and uh, coming forward with that uh, uh, lithium peroxide is highly efficient than lead acid battery and that can give you a output for example uh, 600 watts of our lithium ferrophosphate can drive a 750 watts uh, mixy grinder those kind of stuff which are even a small unit which are. so the output is more in lithium ferrophosphate and uh, second thing is that uh, uh, if in case our our unit as a service related issue we will be temporarily providing a, a spare system worst case worst case normally the fuse breaks up and it's just we have to reduce the load and put the fuse back and it starts back so if in case the uh, if the circuit boards break or something like because of overload we can uh, we can op, uh, we can uh, we can change it in the same place and it can get back to normal or we will take back to the factory and we will fix it up where maximum the issue uh, delay of services happens is in the oem if the right uh, manufacturers has been contacted like uh, we are uh, we are into technical uh, sorry it take uh, uh, instead of rebranding people go for rebranding where they can't give a proper solution but the person who is technically strong and is running a company obviously they can give the right solution immediately thank you i think he has suggested a better model to the inverter manufacturers see he said in case worst case if required i will support the customer with a temporary backup system so, uh, i think uh, we have to take a, a message from that um, before i think uh, one or two questions we will conclude but i think ravi uh, i uh, though i am in the panel i would uh, uh, request you to listen to this question i am asking the question to mr manoj but it is more applicable to a manufacturer see the pli scheme has already announced the second phase which says that uh, the uh, inverters there are Uh, cut off points as far as efficiency as well as the uh, the uh, temperature coefficient uh, are also concerned either it shall be 21% with uh, minus 4% uh, temperature coefficient or 20.5% of efficiency with minus 0.35% of uh, temperature coefficient now the point is along with that you know these are all uh, finally to be qualified for alm will it not be a cause or reason for another price increase of the module that is my question already uh, the prices have gone up nearly 40% in the past one year now uh, with this ambitious uh, energy uh, cappings now uh, uh, put under the pli scheme the prices will further shoot and the system prices are also uh, going to uh, be uh, by uh, affected uh, on the positive side i think this factor is uh, i i expected this to be discussed uh, in some session right from morning uh, in the even in the module manufacturing uh, session but it was unfortunately not manoj uh, how is how do you react to that will it have will that prices uh, expected go up afterwards ravi kindly give your comment also uh, see uh, i would say see uh, the manufacturers uh, see we expected when the uh alm list or the uh, dcr the make in india projects have come in when uh, the uh, uh, customs duty uh, have been increased we expected that module prices at least the indian made module prices have been going to settle somewhere uh, or it will not increase or it may uh, red, it may red, the, the imported modules have been the higher higher price modules and the indian modules prices will reduce but unfortunately the trend happened in a different way see uh, uh, what i have seen is the all indian manufacturers are, are uh, increasing the price uh, they were competing each other to reach the price where the chinese module manufacturers price after the implementation of of uh, the basic customs duty increase so what uh, the new pli scheme with the uh, additional qualification requirements will definitely the, the manufacturers will increase the price and that will definitely going to 
put the burden on the epcs because the epcs bottom line is always fixed with the tendering process or maybe the benchmark pricing or something in the broader spectrum maybe you if you talk about the premium market or any xyz market there is only 20% market is considered as the premium or ultra premium remaining 80% market is going to get affected definitely with any of the new implementation that is what i personally feel i think uh, the bottom line is that uh, uh, let's get ready for another price increase uh, once this pli scheme is uh, uh, completed you would like uh, to put some uh, comments on that mr ravi actually i am not much of a sales guy i, I basically have the knowledge more about the product but uh, as i said that about the pli scheme <coughs> we can say that uh, obviously the price would go higher but once the market is constant like once uh, we have achieved it then we uh, then we think that we can stabilize the price and the price would be at that time would be constant because uh, as of now we are also planning to launch dcr modules uh, in this uh, in the end of this december so i think uh, as per the technology as per the market research <laughs> the prices for the dcr module will rise initially but uh, it will become constant at some point thank you uh, thank you very much so he, he also endorsed that uh, the prices uh, may slightly go up but slightly he is more conservative but you know how it is going to be with the efficiency and thermal compensation getting capped there it is very difficult to maintain at this price level it is going to shoot up so i i i think we are going to conclude uh, but i uh, i have a before i wind up i have a request to eq international i i couldn't see mr anand here please convey my message to him kerala is very proactive in uh, all these te- technology awareness programs we conduct a lot of expos in our state uh, even in this uh, 2022 itself we conducted two major events in kochi itself uh, so kindly uh, give adequate coverage uh, to such uh, events uh, in future uh, we request uh, you also to be our partner next time you should be our media partner so uh, uh, kind convey this to sri anand uh, yeah, i'm not able to see him right anand now. sir is going right now so he okay. is not here right. so definitely we can do something for kerala also and uh, if you want you can also everyone can also share something with us to publish in our magazine or to publish sure. uh, just like any article or any news you want to publish in eq you can definitely uh, share with us we will uh, uh, give you our success stories yeah definitely kerala sir, stories we'll okay Thank you okay. very much. Thank you Thank for you so that much, positive sir. response. Thank you so much, all the speakers. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Shiv Rama Krishnan sir, for moderating the great session. And uh, I would like to invite Mr. Raj Kiran sir to uh, distribute mementos to all the speakers.